Okay, uh, this week we're looking at the topic of speaking with wisdom, the next two weeks, so t- today and next week, uh, talking about speaking with wisdom. Last week, if you're here, Scott was here uh, to, to talk about uh, just how God's worked in his life. Thanks to those of you who supported him uh, through some generous donations uh, and just uh, uh, support him through uh, prayer as well. But hopefully we got to see a little bit just how big God is, how God works in different people's lives in different ways. Um, but this week and next, kind of a little mini-series here on speaking with wisdom. Uh, so much of life depends on the words that we speak, or maybe uh, even more so, the words that we choose not to speak. Uh, we live in a really interesting time where almost everyone has a platform from which their voice can be heard. Most of us right now could get out our smartphones and we could uh, make a comment to the President of the United States and there's a chance that he would see the comment that we've made. He could even interact with us. So there's this uh, huge platform for our voices to be heard and everyone uh, almost believes that, that their voice needs to be heard and they want to make it heard, uh, whether they know much about the topic or not, uh, they're still able to share their thoughts. Now, while these uh, social media rants can be annoying from time to time, or, or you see them online and you just, you have things you want to say and you have it typed out and you're thinking about pushing uh, the button to submit it, you, you erase it, uh, you know, probably wisdom in that. But uh, while, while we see those, those rants online, uh, typically the words that have the most impact in our lives are the words that we speak on a daily basis, the words that we speak with our family, our friends, our co-workers. Those are the words that really have great impact. Uh, and our families, uh, if, if you're especially close uh, with, with family, or if you're married, uh, you know that those are the people who get the best of your words, but they also get the worst of your words. The people closest to us, they get our worst, uh, but they also get our best. Uh, so I wonder, how did this past week go for each of you? The words that you spoke, were they kind and compassionate and patience and loving and supporting, or did you have some stretches of time where some words came flowing out of your mouth that were not so patient? Maybe they were harsh and they were disrespectful. They were full of anger. Uh, Do you allow your environment to shape the words that come out of your mouth, or do you use the words that come out of your mouth to shape the environment around you? Uh, Because we know that the words that come out of our mouths, they really have the ability to shape the environment. If, If everything is chaotic and stressful in the morning. Maybe you have little children, they're getting ready for the day, and and it can be chaotic. And if we drop the right words into that environment, it can really change the entire feeling uh, of that space. And it works the other way as well. If if there's a space that's calm and and peaceful, uh, we could stir up some real tension and anxiety pretty quickly if we choose to say uh, the wrong words at that time. Uh, Speaking with wisdom. It sounds nice, but I think we all know how difficult it is to truly speak with wisdom. So for two weeks, we're going to talk about speaking with wisdom. And my prayer is that each person here would have a greater desire to speak with wisdom and that you will continue to pursue that desire even after these two weeks are done. And I am confident that it can give you, uh, it can heavily impact all of your relationships, especially those uh, that are closest to you, uh, the, the relationships in your family, the relationships at work or with your closest friends. Now, today, my, my plan is to do really some foundational work in the area of speaking with wisdom. Uh, we need this before we can get into the details that we'll look at next week. So next week, uh, we'll get into more practical talk and, and talk about uh, the, the way that, that we actually speak and, and how things impact what we say, uh, the things of our environment. But today, uh, we're going to look at just this foundational information of speaking with wisdom. First, we're going to talk about why it's so important to speak with wisdom. And second, we're going to look at a universally essential component to speaking with wisdom. It's a must-have. And then next week, uh, again, we'll get into more details, how 
anger impacts the words you say, how your environment impacts the words you should say, uh, how often you should speak the way we should speak. Um, but for this week, we're sticking at ground level. So let me pray for us, and uh, we're going to jump into this first question. Why is it so important to learn how to speak with wisdom? If you want to open up your Bible, Proverbs 18, uh, 20, and 21 is the primary text that we'll work from. Uh, let me pray for us. Well, Father God, uh, we're just here before you now, and we open up your word. We trust it to be true, so we just pray that uh, we'd be opening up our hearts to receive whatever you have for us, God. I pray that uh, as I speak words this morning, that each person would be listening for the words uh, that, that you're speaking into their hearts, and Lord, that uh, you'd just be stirring uh, in us as a people, uh, that we would have a desire to speak with wisdom, that we could speak in a way that uh, shows your love and, uh, and your truth, uh, God, with the people around us. So. Uh, Set aside any uh, distractions that may be creeping into our minds during this time, and uh, Lord, just invite you to work. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Why is it so important to learn how to speak with wisdom? The short answer is that uh, the words you speak will impact every aspect of your life. The words you speak are going to impact every aspect of your life. And we should probably add to that that the words you speak and the way that you speak them will impact every aspect of your life. Uh, one thing that every single person on the entire planet has in common is that they are living in relationship with someone. There may be a few strange exceptions where someone is living in complete isolation, but almost every person in the entire world is living in relationship with others. Um, they, whether you're uh, just one day old, whether you're a hundred years old, whether you cannot see, whether you cannot talk, you're still living in relationship with others. And what does every single relationship we have depend on? What do all of our relationships depend on? It depends on communication. It depends on words. Uh, whether it be through texting, whether it's through sign language, maybe it's mailing letters, uh, maybe it's phone calls, maybe it's a daily face-to-face -face conversation, uh, but our words are super high impact because they impact uh, every aspect of our lives. Uh, you can't live with peace and contentment if you're not speaking with wisdom. Your home cannot be an environment of peace and joy and just calm if we're not speaking with wisdom. We cannot know the joy of marriage that God has intended for us if we're not speaking with wisdom to our spouse. Uh, we will all suffer if we don't speak from wisdom in some way or another. And it's important to understand that when we speak with wisdom, or excuse me, if, if we speak a hurtful word to someone, we're not just hurting that individual. We're hurting a relationship because nobody lives in isolation. So I can't speak a hurtful word to one person and that, that hurt is going to be confined to them. Anytime we speak a hurtful word, it is chewing away at the relationships around them. If, if I tell my children, shut up. Now, that is not just uh, damaging my child it's damaging the relationship that we have. It's damaging my ability to relate to my child, to build trust with my child. So it's not contained to one of my children. That is now damaging the relationship that I have with them. And what is the greatest commandment? What are the, the two greatest commandments that God has given us? One, love God. Secondly, it's just like the first one, love others. Love that's relational. It depends on relationship. Almost every commandment that God has given us in Scripture requires relationship. And if we're not speaking with relationship, then we're, or if we're not speaking with wisdom, we're injuring those relationships. Love God, love people. We have to be uh, speaking with wisdom to maintain those relationships. The last thing that God wants us to do is to damage our ability to relate with other people or to relate with himself how we're created to. Uh, James chapter 3, it's a great chapter just to, to read on uh, speaking with wisdom if you want later today, James chapter 3. But it says, the tongue can corrupt the whole body. 
Our whole being can be corrupted by the words that we speak. It says uh, the entire course of our life is impacted by the words that we speak. It's like a tiny rudder that steers a big ship. You know, you see these big ships sailing through the water, and sometimes it's a rudder that's uh, determining the way that they go, and our tongue works in the same way. This small piece in our mouth can uh, direct the way that we go through life. Uh, so let's look at Proverbs 18:20 20 to 21, and it's going to support this idea that the words we speak uh, really are impacting the, the relationships around us uh, more than just one person. It also comes back to impact us. Proverbs 18:20 20 and 21, it says, "From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life." are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will be satisfied. Now, what does that mean? Verse 20, from the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. And more contemporary language, it may read like this. You're going to eat your words. We all have heard that before that we are going to eat our words. There's no question here. Uh, we're all going to, to eat the words that we speak. The only question is how those words are going to taste as we chew on them and digest them. Uh, if your words have been spoken in wisdom, then you digest them and it's like fresh fruit. It's good. It's satisfying. Um, have you ever had to eat some words that you didn't uh, enjoy chewing on? Maybe... Some people still feeling effects from that right now, from some comments you made or someone else made to you over the weekend or a week ago or 15 years ago. Words are powerful in how they impact us. Um, Because we're human, I imagine everyone here has had that experience of uh, digesting some words that didn't taste very good on their way down. Uh, The words we speak, you can view them kind of like a boomerang, a well-thrown boomerang. If I I throw it, it's going somewhere and never coming back. But if you throw a boomerang well, it's supposed to come right back to you. And that's the same way our words speak. They're always coming back to us. They're always going to impact who we are. You know, in the moment, we want to speak a word of hurt or we want to be disrespectful. And what's the result of that? It doesn't just hurt that individual, it also weighs us down. We've also injured ourselves, and the worst thing is that we have damaged that relationship between two people. Uh, Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life, that's our entire existence, what our experience will be in this life. It's connected directly to our tongues. The words that we speak will help create the environment around us. It says, those who love it will eat its fruit. What is it? Those who love it will eat of its fruit. It is the tongue. Those who love their tongues. That sounds strange to talk about, but uh, the thought is that if we love our tongues, that we will be satisfied in life. Now, what do you do with something you love? What do you do with someone you love? You cherish them. You study them, you invest in them, you take good care of them. Those who enjoy learning to speak well will eat of its fruit, and it will be satisfying. So there are right and there are wrong ways to talk. And if we use our tongues to do what God has created them to do, the promise is satisfaction in our lives. So is your marriage in a rough season? Are relationships at work strenuous? Have you been a little too harsh with your children? Do you have some friendships that are fractured? They can all be restored, but it's going to require the ability to speak with wisdom. Proverbs 12, 18, there is one whose rash words, they're like sword thrusts, it says, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. The tongue of the wise brings healing. We all want restored relationships. We want to be able to exist with others in loving relationships. And what we're getting at here is speaking with wisdom is able to renew and restore those relationships if we are willing to give uh, the time and the discipline to investing in that. Um, 
oftentimes speaking with wisdom brings the healing that we want. And that's what God is after in our lives. God is a God who restores. He brings healing and he wants us to experience that. So if speaking with wisdom is so vitally important to living a satisfying life, if it's necessary to sustain peaceful relationships, how can we start speaking with greater wisdom? If uh, I want to improve my marriage, if I want to improve these work relationships or a friendship, if I want to see healing there, what is the best way to start speaking with greater wisdom? I think option one is that we just put in the hard work, right? We just start doing a better job. When we need to hold our tongues, we hold them. When we need uh, to, to speak a little more patiently or a little more compassionately, we do that. And we can just be disciplined and put in the hard work to accomplish that on our own. But here's the problem. James 3.8 says this. I believe it's true. It says, no human being can tame the tongue. James 3 says you can tame all kinds of animals. You can tame sea creatures, you can tame reptiles, you can tame birds, but no human being can tame the tongue. With the tongue, we speak words of love, and then the next sentence or later that day, we speak words of cursing. There's divisiveness on our tongues, and that shouldn't be is what God is getting at. We should be unified in our words, speaking consistently love in a way that builds people up. Uh, A little later in James chapter 3, If you'd keep reading down, it says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, it's peace-loving, it's considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, it's impartial, it's sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace will reap a harvest of righteousness, it says. What are these characteristics? Pure, peace-loving, considerate, full of mercy, it's satisfying. But back up, before those characteristics, is really the most important statement in that verse. What did it say? The wisdom that comes from heaven. Now, we've talked about this before. True wisdom comes from God. You see, we can all create the life that we want for ourselves. We can put in the hard work with our own worldly wisdom, and we can create whatever environment we're after. But if we want to find the life that God truly has planned for us, then we need the wisdom from heaven that is His. That is the only way to discover the life that God truly has planned for us to live, is to know His wisdom and to live accordingly. Uh, Many of you know who wrote the book of Proverbs, the vast majority of it. Solomon, King Solomon, the wisest man to ever live. Second Chronicles chapter 1, if you turn back uh, into the Old Testament, you, you can see God approaches Solomon. He says, Solomon, you can ask for whatever you want. You can ask for anything you want. What's Solomon ask for? Wisdom. Give me wisdom. So what's God do? God's so pleased with his request that he gives him wisdom. He says, Solomon, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, I'm also going to give you everything else that your heart could have asked for. All of the desires in your heart that you could have asked for, I'm going to include those uh, with your request for wisdom. God gave Solomon wisdom, and then he gave him everything else he could have asked for. Asked for. Obtaining wisdom from God is the way to obtaining everything else that our hearts long for. You want to be satisfied? You want to have peace, you want to have fulfillment, you want joy, you want pleasure in this life, ask for wisdom from God, and he says, I will give you wisdom, and I will give you everything else that you could have asked for as we live in obedience to God. We ask for wisdom, and he throws the rest in. Proverbs 9, 10, many of you know it, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. As proposal of the Bible, live as if you believe God is truly God. Have fear of the Lord and live uh, in the way that he has called us to. That is the beginning of wisdom. We know it's that obedience that leads us into the freedom uh, that Christ has purchased for us. Uh, The book of Proverbs, if you go back to chapter 1, verse 1, you'll read through a few chapters uh, that are really speaking as if wisdom is talking. And, and you get to, to chapter 1, verse 23, wisdom speaking, this is God, God's wisdom. Uh, he says, if you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. The greatest satisfaction 
the deepest joy in this life, the strongest, most healthy relationships uh, in this life come from the person who has admitted, I cannot do this on my own. I'm not capable. It's exhausting. It's frustrating. It's time for me to turn 180 degrees and pursue something or someone else. And after admitting that shortcoming and and turning 180 degrees towards God, we say, Lord, I'm yours. I've tried it all, but it's not working. I choose to trust you. I choose to live for you. Jesus, help me. And when we turn to the Lord, he pours out his spirit, the spirit from heaven, the spirit of God's wisdom, not worldly wisdom, but God's wisdom. And how does this turning toward God play out in our day-to-day lives? It's not a one time we pray the prayer of salvation and check into church every once in a while and close the book and call it Christianity. Following after God is this daily pursuit of coming to Jesus and recognizing that we have to deny ourselves every day. Jesus himself said it this way. He says, deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow me daily. Every morning we wake up and we say, Jesus, you can navigate this day better than I can, so help me through it. So many people, they want to speak with wisdom. So many people want to see relationships restored, relationships renewed. But we can't do that until we're willing and able to submit to Jesus daily and to follow after him each day. The essential component of being able to speak with wisdom and being able to know the blessings that result from speaking well, the satisfaction in our stomachs, universally, the essential component is to receive that new heart from God. We're just not good enough on our own. And yeah, we can do the best and make the best of it on our, uh, by ourselves. Uh, people are doing that all over and they're getting through just fine, but it's still missing out on the joy and peace that God makes available to all those who choose to turn to Him and seek after His way of living. That gift that God gives The abundant life now, it also sustains for all of eternity and the presence of God. Jesus uh, once was teaching, he spoke what may as well have been written in Proverbs. It's a proverb, essentially. Jesus says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. We may as well see that in Proverbs. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. If our hearts are not in love with God, then we cannot speak the way that God loves us to speak. Solomon received wisdom from God because he knew God and he loved God and he asked him for it. We're told that if you ask for wisdom, God will give generously to those who ask. So do you have a heart shaped by God, a heart that completely belongs to him, or do you have a heart that's being controlled by self? Whose desires in this life are you seeking after? And until we have that heart that's shaped by God himself, we cannot speak with wisdom that honors God. So if you're here today and your heart is right with God, I encourage you, keep pressing on. Keep learning who Jesus is. Keep learning to discover more about him, how to love God better, how to love your neighbors and your coworkers better. But if you're here today and you're not so sure that your heart is truly set on pleasing God, you know that you might need to improve the way you're speaking, would you ask Him for a new heart? Ask for a heart that desires to please Him above all else? Ask Him for a heart that has the ability to speak with wisdom? If you're in that situation, I think this is the ideal situation. If you've been battling with an ability to speak with wisdom, or if you're not in the right relationship with God the way that you think maybe you should be, if you know you just need to clean up the way you speak and to honor God more with your mouth, here's how it plays out, ideally. You admit your shortcomings. You say, Lord, I'm in a bind. I can't do it on my own. It's exhausting. I keep screwing up. We admit our shortcomings. Secondly, we ask God for help. Lord, help me. And it's not one and done. This is daily pursuit of Christ. Every day, help me, Jesus. You can navigate this day better than I can. Help me through it. Three, read his word. Start in Proverbs. There's 31 Proverbs. Most months have 31 days. 
Read one proverb every day. It only takes a few minutes. Read a proverb a day for an entire month. Maybe repeat that a few times over. And finally, I can't ever uh, overemphasize the, the importance of this. Discuss what you've read with someone who loves God weekly. This is so valuable. I hope that sitting in a pew and listening to someone speak offers some encouragement, offers some challenge in your life, uh, inspires you, does all of those things. But know that there is nothing that can replace the opportunity to sit down with someone and use your words to share what God has spoken in His Word, to ask questions, to share thoughts. This is all one-way teaching. And you all have to leave, and maybe some of you have an opportunity to unpack it with others. But there's nothing that can replace the opportunity we get as believers to come together and have conversation about God's Word, to learn how to apply it. Uh, Jesus tells us that it's in obedience to His Word that we'll, truly, that we'll discover uh, the freedom that He has uh, that he desires for us. So find a friend, find a coworker, find uh, someone from the church, find uh, a, a neighbor, find anybody who loves God that you can open up God's word and speak truth with. Uh, admit your need, ask for help, get in his word, and discuss it with somebody. Speaking with wisdom begins with seeking God. He is the source of wisdom. We cannot even go on and talk about this. It would be foolish to jump right in to talking about speaking with wisdom if we haven't first sought out the giver of wisdom. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Psalm or Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be born into new life. You will be given a new heart that overflows with words spoken with the wisdom of God as He fills you up. Let me close with us, uh, close us with prayer as uh, the worship team comes up. Father God, that we just come before you now and uh, wrap up this time of thinking about your word and what it says. And Lord, I do pray that people here would have the opportunity to discuss this with others in their lives, Lord, that we could ask questions and share thoughts. And God, that we don't have to come in here for uh, 30 minutes and receive a bunch of information and have nowhere to process it. God, I pray uh, that you just build in us a desire uh, to be true disciples of your son, Jesus, and to, uh, to therefore discover uh, the truth and uh, the freedom uh, that is ours in Christ. And God, I, I just want to recognize that there are probably many people in here today uh, who are living in an environment where uh, the person they're living alongside of has no desire to speak with wisdom. They don't value it. Uh, God, the the people here may be trying to speak with wisdom that pleases you and it's tiring, it's exhausting when the only thing that comes back are are words of insult uh, that God, that just wears on us. So for those people in that situation, Lord, I pray that you would just fill them uh, with a sense of, of patience. God, that you would give them joy in the midst of that hardship and suffering uh, of, of receiving hurtful, hard words while choosing to continue to speak in love. God, we need uh, your strength to get through those times. And Lord, this week, uh, I pray that you would help each one of us uh, speak a word that's pleasing to you or hold our tongue in a moment uh, that we should, God, as as we desire to be a people who speak with your wisdom. And uh, we know that it only comes from pursuing you, so help us in it. Uh, Keep us safe till we meet again. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.